well hello everybody it's um, time to worship the Lord here at Grace Presbyterian Church even though I am in my home office uh, because of the lockdown here in California um, we can still gather online um, through this video if you haven't watched if you're not watching it live but for those of you that are watching it live I know that um, your prayers and your singing and your um, uh, joining with me in worship uh, will be received by our Lord and it'll be a moment of inspiration for us a moment of of uh, focusing on our Lord and um, I'm, I'm glad you're here joining with me this morning um, got a couple of quick announcements uh, just so that our church community will know um, the bread of life Tuesday meals are still happening we're giving out sack dinners um, and thanks to Maria High and her volunteers, some of the deacons and and also Pablo Acosta and, and all the work that they're doing to provide um, these resources for people that are hungry. Um, it's an amazing ministry. Um, <clears throat> I'm encouraging you to stay connected also. Uh, our elders and our deacons are standing by ready to pray for and uh, uh, address any needs that you might have so be sure and check your emails um, call the church leave a voicemail if you have a need or email us let us know um, we are mobilized and ready to um, give to you all uh, the help that we can give during this time of crisis stay connected um, it's important for our community of faith to uh, Continue to connect with one another, share with one another, check in with each other, love each other. Um, and if you have any very special pastoral needs, be sure and call the church office and we'll be glad to respond. Also, uh, the ministry of this congregation uh, uh, has certain obligations and bills to pay and people to um, um, to compensate uh, for the ministry that uh, that we've hired them to do so be sure and send in your offerings and um, support your ministry that uh, you dearly love um, don't forget to drop them off either in the mailbox at the church or um, uh, be sure and and have a, a time um, where you can give of your time energy and money I'd like to start our worship with the a call to worship reading from psalm 105 give thanks to the lord call on his name make known among the nations what he has done sing to him sing praise to him tell of all his wonderful acts glory in his holy name let the hearts of those who seek the lord rejoice look to the lord and his strength seek his face always let us pray. Lord God, we pray for your Holy Spirit to come and enhance this worship experience as we gather together to lift you up and praise your name, to focus on you, Lord, for you are the giver and sustainer of all good and perfect gifts. And we are so grateful, Lord, that we can, um, no matter where we are, still worship you, still uh, lean into you for all of the help and the, and the, um, um, praise that we can give to you and we pray this in Jesus name amen well I'm going to um, lead us in a song such as it is I know that maybe the uh, the quality of the sound and and my voice and all that are, are not much but uh, I know this that uh, we can praise the Lord and this comes right out of this out of the Psalms um, this song that I'm going to do is called 10,000 Reasons. It's from um, the Redmond family, Matt and Beth and Jonas uh, Marin. Um, so um, let's, let's just take a moment to praise the Lord. The sun comes 
comes up. It's a new day dawning. It's time to sing your song again. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me. Let there be singing when the evening comes. Let the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I'll worship Your holy name. sentiment of that song it it just is uh you know one of those songs that 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 calls us to worship god whether he gives or whether he takes away whether we are in sorrow whether we are in praise god is worthy of our praise well lord we pray that you would open up to us your word this morning that your Holy Spirit would guide us uh, in understanding it and be inspired by it. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to pr um, talk about how, you know, we're in this lockdown situation here in, in uh, California and around the nation. And um, we are separated from so many things. Uh, we can't go to work. We can't, you know, except for certain individuals out there, of course. But uh, we've, in all the fear and all the anxiety and the worry that we may be experiencing right now, we cannot forget to take time to be still and know God, to pray. And um, I'm, I ask the question, you know, how do we pray during a crisis when we're so anxious and so worried? We can still Pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Um, and it's listed in, uh, or it's written in Ma uh, Matthew chapter 6 and in Luke chapter 11. And I'm going to read the passage in Luke and refer to the Matthew passage as well. We all know this prayer. It's an outline prayer. It's an index prayer. It's called the Lord's Prayer. So hear the word of God. One day Jesus was praying in a certain place. And when he'd finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples. And he said to them, when you pray, say, Father, 
hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone who sins against us. And lead us not into temptation. And that's where Jesus ends the prayer. Um, later on, scribes added, for thine is the kingdom and the glory and the power forever, uh, which they thought was a better ending than st stopping that uh, lead us not into temptation. From the time Jesus chose his disciples until this encounter, Jesus didn't spend a whole lot of time teaching his disciples how to pray, but he demonstrated how to pray. And when he prayed, it was powerful and things happened. Um, and the disciples wanted to learn to pray like Jesus learned, had uh, prayed. And so he taught them this prayer. In fact, some scholars think it ought to be called the disciples prayer because it is Jesus's prayer for us to pray. Uh, it's an outline for us to pray. His prayers got results. And so um, uh, the disciples and we want to learn how Jesus prayed so we can pray like him. And I think during this time of crisis, it's important for us to pray like Jesus prayed in expectation with the understanding that God is all powerful and that he in invites our prayers and we are to intercede on behalf of others. Uh, for their healing, for their deliverance, uh, for their sustaining. Um, so we find this prayer in, in two Gospels, like I said, Matthew 6 and Luke 11. Um, and it, uh, Jesus makes a little preference uh, to this prayer in Matthew. He says, um, uh, don't pray like... Uh, um, prayers of, uh, of repetitive rituals uh, with many words. Um, pray, he says, your father knows what you need. And so uh, before you even ask it, so pray um, naturally, pray uh, with um, meaning, with uh, heart and soul. Focus your prayers on the father. So that's the first line of his prayer. Our father who art in heaven. Focus on God, who is the creator of the universe, who's in heaven. He's separate from this creation. He's the one um, who is in charge of everything. <laughs> Martin Lord, Lloyd Jones writes, is God your God? Uh, do you know him really as your father? That is uh, the way to start, says our Lord, to realize that you have become a child of God because of what he has done for you through the Lord Jesus Christ. We're the children of God. And he invites us to climb up into his lap and to know that he is God and to share our joys and concerns with him. The Heavenly Father can be trusted and loved and sought after. He will never fail us. So the next phrase in this beginning of the prayer is, who art in heaven? Uh, God the Father is divine and perfect in every way. We can climb into his lap never to be rejected. And he eagerly desires for us to come to him with anything and everything that we need. Our Heavenly Father can be trusted to give us all good and perfect gifts. Jesus taught in the parable that immediately follows the Lord's Prayer in Luke, uh, these words. He says, which of you fathers, if, you, if your son asks for a fish, will give you a snake instead? Or if he asks for an egg, will give you a a scorpion. If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Unbelievable. Our God wants to give us his Holy Spirit to live within us, to guide us and to sustain us, to inspire us, to lead us not into temptation, but to give us all that we need in this world that is good and perfect. So after uh, centering our attention on God the Father, the first petition that Jesus gives to us to pray is, hallowed be the, your name. In other words, Jesus is telling us to remember that God is holy and totally separated from his creation. Remember that God is God. <laughs> He's alive and he alone is worthy 
of all of our of our praise. Too much of our worldviews, God is limited in his power and abilities, and our tendency is to view God as too small. But if we believe the Bible, our God is very big and capable, and he's sovereign over all things. His ways, of course, are not our ways, but we trust in him. When we know God as he really is, it leads us to the importance of his name. And when we lift the name of God, we're praying that God will be known as he has made himself known through Jesus Christ, our Lord, as he's our father, as he's the Christ's father. In short, we pray that God's reputation in this world will be greatly improved as we lift up the name of God before the world, the sustainer and the giver of all that we are and, and the deliverer um, for us from all of these scourges and pestilences and, and sicknesses and illnesses and things that, that want to harm us. The petition is in effect asking God to make his real identity known to the world so that we might all recognize and honor him as he really is. So let's now look at the second petition, your kingdom come. So following the praise of God, the disciples were taught to pray for the coming of God's kingdom. The kingdom of God is not yet a geographical reality, but an authority, a dominion, a power that we experience in the present. The New Testament understanding of God's kingdom was that the future kingdom would be established uh, in this world at the second coming of Christ. But until that time, we get glimpses of that kingdom authority and power in this present moment, in this time that we live, when we experience God's work through Jesus Christ and through the church. Whenever there is love, wherever there is deliverance, wherever there is uh, redemption and rescue and healing and restoration, God's kingdom has made its presence known. And Jesus said, the kingdom of God has come near to you. Wherever Jesus is, wherever his church is, the kingdom of God has come near. God's dominion, his power and authority has come near to us. What a great gift to us. But God's kingdom is not yet. It's not fully realized. One of my professors in seminaries used to say, we live in the presence of the future, wherever we are in the presence of God's kingdom. When we pray for God's kingdom to come, we pray for him to exercise his power and authority over evil and disease. When we pray this prayer, we desire God's kingdom authority to reign over our governments, our our cities, our schools, our families, our communities. Only God can do these things. Only God has the authority and power to turn darkness into light, to bring healing to the sick, to bring um to make spears, weapons into plowshares. The children of the Father are here in the enemy's territory where the kingdom which is in heaven is not yet fully manifested. What's more natural? When we learn to hollow the Father's name, that they should long and cry with deep enthusiasm, Thy kingdom come. Come in the midst of of this world's darkness. Come in the midst of disease and illness and bring healing, bring your kingdom authority to bear in this world. Well, the third petition is your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Jesus wants us to pray for God's will to be done because our will is always limited in scope and selfish in nature. Yep. Yeah. What is the will of God? Well, we can know that God's will is what is revealed in Scripture, especially in the Sermon on the Mount, in which the Lord's Prayer is contained. That sermon can, uh, contains wonderful guidance as to what God's will is, such as the Beatitudes, a deep respect for persons and great devotion and loyalty to God, and declaring God's grace throughout the world to, to just to name a few. 
following God's will is taking scripture seriously, which informs how we pray in this world. In the second part of this petition, on earth as it is in heaven, teaches us that our concerns are far more than our little world of existence. We are to remember that there is a big world out there that God loves us and cares for us and that we should care for that world as well. And Jesus wants us to know that in heaven there is a perfect world in existence that is ordered and created in such a way that is in a perfect obedience to God. We're to expect that this heavenly realm can and will somehow influence the earth as we pray for its um, its daily bread and for its daily needs. Well, the next petition, the second half of the Lord's Prayer, is where the focus is on the human condition. So, so far we've heard the first three petitions which are focused on God and his reign over this world. Now we're focusing on our needs. Um, Dale Bruner wrote, wrote this. He said, <clears throat> Jesus is not satisfied when we pray only for the most important things, God's honor, rule, and will. He gives equal time to human matters. These three petitions help us to see that it is not selfish to pray about physical, social, or personal needs. It is, in fact, Jesus's command that we pray for these things. The fourth petition, give us this day our daily bread can be taken literally to mean that we are to pray for our daily food needed to sustain us and the broader interpretation also of our daily needs in prayer we are to trust god to provide us with food to nourish our bodies shelter and clothing to protect us companionship to comfort in spiritual things to nourish our souls in my experience, the more I trust God for my daily needs, the more affirmation I receive of God's care as he provides those daily needs. Jesus taught in the Sermon on the Mount not to worry over our daily needs, but to trust God to provide them. Not to worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will take care of itself. He taught us to seek first the kingdom of God that, uh, and that all these things will be added unto us. Now, this prayer is never more uh, pertinent than when we are in need and dependent upon God to provide when we don't know how we will make it to the next day. If you're sick or if you know somebody that's sick and you're worried and anxious about them, pray for their need, this daily need for life and sustenance and deliverance. Trust God and watch how faithful our Heavenly Father is to his children. So the fifth petition is forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. In other words, we're to remember God's grace given to us that we are no longer in debt to God for our sin. Now that's huge. Too many Christians don't live in this full freedom and liberation that God has given to us in Jesus Christ because we have not believed fully that our sins are forgiven. We live as if our debt is ours to pay. Well, I'm here to tell you today that um, if you're weighted by the guilt of sin, but you have given your life to Jesus, then you are totally forgiven. That's the promise of this prayer. Place that burden at the foot of the cross and be free of that guilt. So God in Christ has already paid that price. Confess it and walk away from it. In addition, as God... Uh, the Father forgives our sins, we are uh, to forgive those who sin against us. Scholar and pastor Bruce Larson tells the story of forgiveness. He says a friend's grandfather ran a feed and grain store during the Great Depression, and he gave credit to so many customers who never did pay him back that he eventually declared bankrupt bankruptcy. It took him years to earn enough to repay all the liens against his business. But on the day when the last creditor was finally paid, the old gentleman took his books, including all the records of the people who had owed him money, totaling $40,000, that was a lot of money back then, and burned them 
in a huge bonfire. With that $40,000 bonfire, he forgave his debtors as he had been forgiven. Now, I'm already hearing stories of people that are forgiving uh, rent and debts and all kinds of things um, temporarily. And, uh, and I mean, look at the, you know, our government right now is forgiving uh, a, lot of, a lot of debt and they're going to be providing for us so much um, to get through this crisis. It all starts with God forgiving us of our sins and us returning that grace to others. The sixth and last petition, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. <laughs> we say deliver us from evil when we pray this traditional prayer, but it literally means from the evil one. Now this petition is meant to remind us to pray for God's help in the face of temptations. It is a prayer for a good future, free of improper behaviors. We live in a world that is constantly trying to convince us to disobey God. Temptations abound and in themselves, they're not sin, but it's how we respond to them that makes us sin. Now, Jesus knows the temptations that we face. He also experienced them, but he also experienced the power of God to resist temptations uh, that would lead him to sin. He knew the word of God and he leaned on the word of God and the power of God's word to resist temptations. And so he gives us this point in the outline to, to pray that God will deliver us from temptations. Pray for the temptations that we face daily and ask God for the help to resist them because we cannot resist them without God's help. You know, it's it's really tempting for us to rely on our human scientists and rely on our human knowledge um, during this time of crisis. But we really need to trust in the Lord always and to lean into him. You know, Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians 10, this following encouragement. He says, no temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But with the temptation, will also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. Pray for God's help. Pray for God's help against the evil one who wants to tempt and lead you astray. And lead you not to trust God, but to trust in your own abilities or the abilities of others in this world. Jesus knows that before we finish praying, we must seek the help of God as we enter back into the world, as we fight on behalf of the kingdom of God against the kingdom of evil. Note that it is the last phrase, but deliver us from the evil one, that helps us to know that it is not God who leads us into temptation, but it's the evil one who is out to destroy and corrupt what, we can't, what he can't destroy of God's creation. So that last phrase um, is there because Jesus knows that when we go back into the world, we are going to need God's help against the evil one. Now, the traditional ending, as I mentioned before, the Lord's Prayer is thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever is a great ending. And it should not be shunned or not um, uh, believed because it is in con it's consistent with God's word to praise God and to lift him up, to glorify his name and to remind ourselves that he is the power and the glory forever and ever. So how do we pray during the coronavirus pandemic? Well, we pray as we have been taught to pray. The Lord's Prayer is the Christian's daily prayer book. It is easily memorized and recalled at times of need. Many a soldier has returned to this prayer in countless foxholes around the world and in so many um, wars and battles that have been fought and waged. When we are in a crisis, we fall back on our training. Our default prayer is a guide to prayer. It would lead us to pray for the moment 
amid need. And when we are not in need, we can still pray this prayer. But know this, prayer is powerful. And God asks us to pray, to participate in accomplishing his will. Scholar Dale Bruner states, it hardly needs to be added that where this prayer is prayed in good faith, its petitioners are given marching orders. Our marching orders for today in this season of uncertainty and fear because of this coronavirus are very simple. We are called to be prayer warriors. In so doing, we will receive the comfort of God's word. We will know the power of God's kingdom come, and we will be motivated to be God's influential people in this world of need. This pandemic will end, and God will be glorified as we fall to our knees in prayer for his deliverance and for his healing. I believe that as we, the people of God, fall on our knees in heartfelt, authentic prayer, we can move the mountain of uncertainty that surrounds this world, and perhaps a revival might break out as people experience the kingdom of God come near to us in this world as it is in heaven. So in in concluding that, I'd like to have a, a word of prayer <laughs> uh, and a time of offering. So let us pray. Now, Father God, we are grateful for your kingdom come here on earth as it is in heaven. We're grateful, Lord, for you to be our heavenly father and that you've called us into relationship through your son, Jesus Christ. And we're so grateful, Lord, that your divine nature touches us and that we have a moment um, to be in your presence when we pray. Bless these gifts of our hearts that we give back to you, Lord. Our praise, our offerings of, of uh, resources, of time, of energy, of service that we give back to you. We intercede, Lord, for our communities, our jobs, our resources um, that are needed for this day and for the uh, sustaining of life that, uh, before you and for all in our communities, in our state and in our nation and throughout the world. May your kingdom come, O oh Lord. Uh, may your will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. Now we pray, Lord, for this day that you will give us what we need, our health um, and sustain our nation, return it back to normality, Lord, for your name's sake. May you be glorified, Lord, as um, uh, businesses and companies are able to function again and um, people are able to work and, and be fulfilled in their their calling sustain us for this day we pray O oh lord and help us to trust you each and every day for um the you know this journey that we're on through an uncertain future forgive us lord where we have fallen short of trusting you and have become anxious and fearful Give us your spirit to deliver us and sustain our faith and not be tempted to fall back on our own understanding. Make straight our paths through these uncertain times ahead, O oh God. And Lord, we pray specifically in this moment of silence for the people that we know of that are in need of your healing. We pray, Lord, for those who are in need of resources, who are out of work, especially the restaurant community. And especially those who, who make their living, Lord, by teaching. Be with them, watch over them, and all of their students. Be with our government, O oh Lord, and all of the leaders that are trying to um, navigate through this incredible crisis that we find ourselves in. Give them wisdom. Give them your spirit. Give them your truth. Help them, Lord, to meet the needs of the people of this nation. 
For you are indeed, Lord, the power and the glory and the kingdom forever. Amen. <clears throat> well, um, shall we sing a song together? Um, and you can follow along in your heart uh, if you don't know this song, but uh, it's a song uh, written by the Redmonds again, Matt and Beth Redmond. Um, and it, it's a song that, that reminds us that God never lets go of us, that he's always got us in his hands. Remember that old song, um, he's got the whole world in his hands? Well, this is kind of an updated version, you might say, of that. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, your perfect love is casting out fear. Yes, that's right, Lord. And even though I'm caught in the middle of the storms of this life, I won't turn back. I know you are near, and I will fear no evil. For my God is with me, and if my God is with me, whom then shall I fear? Whom then shall I fear? Oh no, you never let go through the calm, through the storm. appropriate song for us to be singing right now. He will never let us go. Well, don't forget to call us and let us know how you're doing and and uh, leave messages on our voicemail. We'll get them. Um, they, they transferred to us uh, wherever we are. Uh, if you have needs, let us know so we can respond to those needs. Um, our deacons are calling and checking in with everybody and if you're not on that call list if you have not gotten the call let us know so we can put you on that list and until the time that we can get together again uh, whether it's here online or whether it's uh, together in person uh, back at the church back in our sanctuary worshiping together and working together and even bible studies um, know this the lord bless you and keep you the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace, both now and forevermore. Amen. Have a great day today, Lord, everybody, and, and know that the Lord is indeed with you. Do not fear. Do not worry. 
you'll get through this.